Do you know that God's Word is active and alive? Life is a mystery. There's so many questions to ask, but the answers will never satisfy our hearts. We continue to search. That is why, let us let God lead our lives through His words, because Yahweh's Word is perfect in every way. How it revives our souls. Yahweh's laws lead us to truth, and His ways change the simple into wise. Yahweh's commands challenge us to keep close to His heart. The revelation light of His word makes my spirit shine radiant. That is why God's word is prized like others prize the finest gold. Sweeter also than honey are His living words. Sweet words dripping from the honeycomb. By listening daily to His words, May God's love and guidance be more felt in your daily life. A reading from the book of the prophet Sirach. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do one's fault when one speaks. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is the test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had. So too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. Responsorial Psalm Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name Most High, to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The second reading is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher. But when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye? 
but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick fig from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of a store of goodness in his heart produces good, but an evil person out of a store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Message of Pope Francis during his Angelus in St. Peter's Square on March 3, 2019. Today's Gospel passage presents brief parables with which Jesus seeks to indicate to his disciples the path to follow in order to live wisely. With the question, can a blind man lead a blind man? He wishes to emphasize that a leader cannot be blind, but must see clearly, that is, he must have the wisdom in order to lead wisely. Otherwise, he risks causing damage to the people who are entrusted to him. Jesus thus calls attention to those who have educational responsibility or who govern, spiritual pastors, public authorities, legislators, teachers, parents, exhorting them to be aware of their delicate role and to always discern the right path on which to lead people. And Jesus borrows a wise expression in order to designate himself as an example of teacher and leader to be followed. A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully taught, will be like his teacher. It is a call to follow his example and his teaching in order to be sound and wise leaders. And this teaching is included above all in the Sermon of the Mount, which in the past three Sundays the liturgy has offered us in the gospel, indicating the attitude of meekness and of mercy in order to be honest, humble, and just people. In today's passage, we find another significant phrase which exhorts us to be neither presumptuous or hypocritical. It says, Why do you see the speck? that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye. So often, as we all know, it is easy or convenient to see and condemn the flaws and sins of others without being able to see our own with such clarity. We always hide our flaws. We even hide them from ourselves while it is easy to see the flaws of others. The temptation is to be indulgent with ourselves, lenient with ourselves, and severe with others. It is always useful to help one's neighbor with wise advice, but while we observe and correct our neighbor's flaws, we must be aware that we too have flaws. If I believe I have none, I cannot condemn or correct others. We all have flaws, everyone. We must be aware of them, and before condemning others, we must look within ourselves. In this way, we can act in a credible way with humility, witnessing to charity. How can we understand if our view is clear or if it is obstructed by a log? And again, Jesus tells us so. No good tree bears bad fruit. Or again, does a bad tree bear good fruit? For each tree is known by its own fruit. 
The fruits are the actions, but also words. A tree's quality can also be understood from words. Indeed, those who are good draw good from their hearts and their mouths, and those who are bad draw bad by practicing the most damaging exercise among us, which is grumbling, gossiping, speaking ill of others. This destroys. It destroys the family, destroys school, destroys the workplace, destroys the neighborhood. Wars begin from the tongue. Let us consider a bit this lesson of Jesus and ask ourselves the question, do I speak ill of others? Do I always seek to tarnish others? Is it easier for me to see others' flaws than my own? And let us try to correct ourselves at least a little. It will do us all good. Let us invoke a merry support and intercession in order to follow the Lord on this journey. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by our peaceable rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her own devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.